What's going on there, folks? Good evening on this, uh, well, it's Memorial Day. Monday, May 31st, 2021, about 7.36 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake on the globe is a 4.9 magnitude quake here south of Fiji. But once again, in that very deep zone where we see a lot of deep movement over time, uh, 4.9 at 575 kilometers below surface for that uh, earthquake. Uh, you can see a lot of earthquake activity on this globe up here in Alaska. Early this morning, late last night, right around 1 p.m. my time, they had a 6.1 magnitude quake. You can see that on the flag right there. Let's go ahead and check out uh, on this map. A little bit easier to see. Uh, there's that 6.1, pretty good sized earthquake in a region um, where there's no doubt we see historical earthquake activity take place. Uh, I was reading some of the uh, articles on this earthquake and I guess uh, a lot of geologists are saying this is no surprise uh, for this earthquake uh, activity in this specific location. So uh, kind of interesting as to their wording on some of that. But uh, that 6.1 showing up right here in this blue circle. Uh, what is that? Chickaloon? Is that Chickaloon, Alaska? That's cool if that's the name. Chickaloon. All right. Um, felt broadly and widely over the area. And uh, from quite a few reports, I've been seeing that this earthquake this morning was a long duration, drawn out earthquake. Uh, you know, just a kind of like a rolling, long duration earthquake, if, if you've ever been through one. Not a sudden jolt, but just a long duration one. And there's a couple. There's a couple things that's kind of puzzling me about this, um, not only from the reports, but uh, from some of the seismograph stations I've been looking at. Okay, this originally uh, was a uh, is six point six point one, but I got if you're like me, I got my USGS notifications on. I get emails and also get text messages when an earthquake over a certain magnitude comes in. Well, this earthquake that happened this morning um, triggered that uh, notification system at uh let's see when this one came in 12 10 a.m my time okay so i was a little off on the time uh 6.0 preliminary report came in 6.0 uh which struck at 06 59 55 which is utc time okay and then the next one my next report that got sent in was a 6.1 preliminary report uh, right about the same time, 06.59.54. So it looks like maybe a second or two um, sooner. But for a 6.1 in the same location. So I thought, wow, there must have been two earthquakes that hit here. So I go on the map and look, only one. And there's still only one. And I went and checked out the EMSC World uh, Earthquakes there. And they still only have one. 6.1 magnitude earthquake as well so they're right right i mean this is just one earthquake that struck but i i like to go behind the scenes and look at specific things triggers or signatures if you will of the earthquakes okay and if you've been watching this channel for a while you know i like to use the yellowstone graphs a lot of big earthquakes show up on this map all the time even though yellowstone is seismically quiet at the moment i still like to use this graph to look at um, earthquakes and their signatures. A signature of an earthquake is something like this. This is a distant earthquake and a large distant earthquake at that. It's not localized. Uh, when it's kind of drawn out, squiggly, not a complete solid red line, uh, a localized earthquake is going to be more defined to the station right here, a sharp spike, a little sharp spike. Those are very small microquakes there that are taking place locally around this uh, seismograph station in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. This here, okay, imagine if you will that this doesn't exist. This, this area from here uh, on this first earthquake, it gets fat and then it slims out and then eventually it just goes away to the normal seismograph reading, which is a flat line, but it doesn't. There's a secondary, just as strong, maybe a little bit, to me it looks a little bit weaker on this graph, looking at this one, than the first one and even so that that gets a little thick and then it draws out a little bit more so that's just one station i'm going back over through all of these stations here and i noticed the same signature on all of them which leads me to believe there was indeed a second earthquake just around the same time as that 6.1 that struck 
Now, do I have any proof? I don't know if this is enough proof or not, but this is a signature of a secondary large quake. Now, before I go into the next one, let's talk about a little bit about this here. Here's a Maple Creek station, Yellowstone National Park. The sensitivity is turned uh, turned up a little bit, so it takes a little bit stronger reading to show up on the graphs, okay? Clearly, you can see this here is the larger earthquake, the 6.1, uh, compared to this. Notice the lack of red lines indicating uh, in the second trim, this second signature, but there is a second second signature there. It's strongly well defined, but not as strong as the first one. So I firmly believe the 6.1 is this one, followed up by 6.0. We'll see if the USGS decides to agree with me on this or not. Um, but I believe strongly that this there was a second earthquake immediately following that first one. And there's a reason why I got two notifications of a 6.1 and a 6.0. Let me know, guys, if you got that same notification on your email or a text mes message. I'm kind of curious. You, you can look at any of these graphs here. And you can see that it's not a mistake. Some of these other ones are so squashed uh, in data that you, you, it won't pick up anything. Even if Bigfoot was stomping all over the seismograph station, it wouldn't pick it up. Here's another one down there, Flag Ranch. But on most of these, you can tell that that first signature is definitely a stronger of the two. Here's a little bit weaker of a signature up there, but you can still see it. There's the 6.1 and there is the six pointer. It's there. So I went ahead and looked over, I was like, well, let's check other seismograph stations within the region. Now, when you're local, say if you pick one of these local stations, I can kind of try to explain here. Uh, last hour, let's go last 24 hours. Oh, you son of a gun. Currently not available now, huh? Okay, I was looking at these stations earlier and I was able to view these. See what's going on. last hour okay there's last hour last 24 hours let me see it please there it is okay so these are all aftershocks here no doubt these are definitely aftershocks uh, because there's uh, hours in between them and they're not as significant as this one right here now I wish I wish I could see this out on a bigger board because a 6.1 say if a 6.1 happens you're gonna have a large very large signature right and it wipes out the entire seismograph and it will do that for a little while. Um, just that, that's how earthquakes go. They don't just happen and then they're gone. They're sending out vibrations, uh, different waves throughout the earth and the seismograph stations are indeed reading them. So looking at this localized station, you will never be able to tell if there was a smaller 6.0 earthquake within the shadow of that 6.1. You won't, you cannot tell. So that's why I go um, at a distance and be able to see these readings right here, these two earthquake readings, those are, and there's no earthquakes nearby in Wyoming that was triggered from that 6.1, nothing. Nothing local, nothing in regional. So I, I firmly believe that there was a second uh, six pointer right there, folks. You, We can go out a little bit. Let's go out, uh, let's check out, um, let's go down here, a little ways away from the epicenter of, the, of that 6.1 this morning in Alaska. Hold on. I'm trying to re rehydrate myself. It's been horrible. Okay, check this one out. Now this one's kind of odd. This one does have two distinct features, but and it's very possible, folks, that there was another six-pointer here. Here's what I'm thinking, just looking at that seismograph, that that six-pointer is a little bit closer to this station where I clicked, right? I clicked on a station that was a little ways away from the 6.1. So looking at this from a distance, there's the 6.1 trigger, and there's the six-pointer. I believe the second one's a smaller one, but in relation to the seismograph station, the six pointer is closer to this seismograph station um, compared to the other one I just showed you. So ultimately, of course, the six pointer is gonna look stronger uh, because it's closer. The 6.1 is a little bit further out from this station here. The station I clicked on is way down here, way down here, okay? See where, the, see where my finger's pointing? The earthquake happened up here in this vicinity. So that's where the 6.1 happened. I'm thinking the six pointer happened 
much closer down here in this region or down here closer to the seismograph station I just showed you folks there was a second signature there so getting out further regionally folks just I mean this all makes sense here doesn't it there's a second signature right there of, a, of an earthquake and I believe we will see that added uh, pretty soon I don't see it on there right now I don't right there's only one there's only one six pointer and that's at 6.1 but watch I think in the next 24 hours they're gonna add that second second earthquake now they talk about a couple folks reported feeling a drawn out extended duration earthquake so two earthquakes happening within uh, roughly about the same time of each other within seconds of each other within the same region of each other but at a distance would create a longer longer duration rolling type quake if you will um, in the vicinity of where this where these earthquakes struck at it uh, 6.1 is a good size earthquake but I don't think it would be extended uh, it doesn't make sense that it would be extended as much in the terms of a secondary a secondary earthquake down here within the same region makes sense for that extended rolling motion and it there's too much of a signature. I'm getting a little excited over this because um, it's there. It's there, plain as view, folks. If you look at these graphs, you'll know what I'm talking about. A secondary signature right there. And this one here, West Boundary, shows it really clear. There's the first one, 6.1. And then there's that 6.0. But this one still shows it a little bit stronger, even though Yellowstone is a ways away from Alaska. But I think it's at that distance to where um, even though that six pointer, even though the imaginary six pointer happened closer down here, it's still regionally too far away to make any noticeable difference on any uh, seismograph station there, there in Yellowstone National Park. Now, say if that six pointer happened uh, down here in, in Canada, of course, that six pointer is going to look much stronger than that six point one did way up here to the north. It's just common sense there. But because I believe that six pointer struck within this region here, I'm, I'm thinking within this vicinity right here, within this vicinity, this subduction zone. And these folks are calling it, the USGS is calling this a subduction zone earthquake. Where the Pacific plate goes underneath Alaska. Let's see if I can find that article here. Um, here we go. Okay, let's read this real quick. I'm not going to go into it a whole bunch. Uh, magnitude 6.1 earthquake late in the evening on Sunday. Uh, it was felt across the mainland of Alaska in our shake map for this event. Okay, duh, duh, duh. Most people who experienced this earthquake were, were a considerable distance away. As a result, the shaking was mostly experienced as a long rolling motions and not the sharp jolt experienced by people close. Okay, that's what these guys are saying. Uh, closest stations registered shaking equivalent to about a 5% of the acceleration of gravity. Okay, we don't need to know all that. Uh, here's where they talk about this earthquake it was not a surprise, geologically speaking. Figure 2 over here shows all the, uh, the earthquakes and whatnot along that subduction zone. Uh, like many earth... Okay, uh, let's see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where, did, where is it? This was one caused by the process of subduction that occurs along our southern coast where the Pacific tectonic plate is being thrust under Alaska. Uh, figure three shows the contours of this tectonic plate underneath Alaska becoming progressively deeper to the north. But this wasn't really a deep earthquake. In terms of speaking, only about 43 kilometers. That's really not deep. It's down there, but not super deep. Um, let's go back. Where to go? Uh, let's see. This is pro uh, further proven by the direction and motion of the fault. The motion suggests that this earthquake resulted from the tremendous tension that the plate experiences that is, it is being pulled downward into the earth. This is common source of earthquakes. Uh, let's see here. A few records. Okay, this is... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So they just keep saying so... Was it a surprise to see this type of earthquake? Not in the least. But like most earthquakes, there's something to learn here if we are willing to pay attention. So these guys are probably thinking that they were expecting this earthquake. I, yeah. Here's where the star hit. Uh, there's a lot of earthquake activity. No folks, no, no joke folks up in Alaska. 
But uh, subduction starts right here. You can see that, the subduction line. So this is well inland by almost 200, 300 miles or so. Way inland. And this struck at about, what, 43 kilometers, 45 kilometers down? Deep, but not super deep. Kind of surprising to me. But I think, folks, that there's a secondary earthquake, and uh, we'll find out here pretty soon if these uh, if, if these guys are going to sort it out. It just it looks like it to me. It does does that not look like a secondary earthquake, folks? I watched these graphs 24/7 for many years. I've watched numerous graphs. I watched eight pointers come into these graphs and multiple six pointers you know from the uh, japan earthquakes back in 2011 when they kept having just massive 6.0 aftershocks following that large nine pointer back then and i've seen how they register on the graphs i see how uh, multiple 6.0s look uh, and this is almost that's about as close as a uh, uh just to me folks to me that's that's it there's no doubt in my mind there's a second earthquake right there but I can't prove it. I mean, I can look at these graphs and I can show people, but, uh, you know, maybe it'll be added. Maybe once a geologist look at it, they'll they'll uh, add that onto the map. So we'll see. Let's go on. Let's move on, folks, from the Alaska area. Uh, and there's no doubt aftershock activity occurring. And, of course, they mentioned, uh, you know, potential uh, further larger magnitudes are always possible within a certain time frame of this uh, the main shock. Right now, mostly uh, just general earthquake aftershock features in this region and about the same distance down below um, about 40 30 20 kilometers below surface all within that same epicenter range of that 6.1 and 144 earthquakes uh, within this vicinity to be exact uh, moving down north in or south i should say into north uh, north america we're uh, uh washington area along the cascades things have really ramped up uh, right around the Mount St. Helens area, we've seen the line of increase in earthquake activity, not only at the Mount, uh, at the summit area, but also in this little linear fashion to the west to the north up here. Kind of interesting there, folks. There's a deep earthquake, 17 kilometers there, uh, uh, just southwest of uh, Helens, St. Helens. But zooming in here to this area, you can see right smack dab in the crater area, right in there. Can't, can't get any closer than that of some microquake activity occurring down below. I'm not talking at the surface. This is right around where magma is. Five kilometers, uh, even some 15 kilometers there for uh, the out, these outside quakes. But the ones right there in the crater, way down there at, uh, you know, what, what's down there at five to six kilometers, folks? Potential magma movement. I uh, have to keep a close eye on that for sure. Uh, Mount Rainier getting in on a little action, but this is uh, outside of the uh, uh, summit area. And uh, for the most part, most of the volcanoes uh, southward look pretty quiet as well. No movement around uh, northern Cal to be uh, showing up here on this map. I don't see anything at all, actually. Uh, for the most part, it looks pretty quiet there in northern California. Uh, there was a little uptick in activity following that 6.1. Uh, this morning in Alaska, we've seen some movement around Los Angeles. And just off the coast there of Santa Monica, look at this little swarm going on. This all happened following that 6.1 right there in the concrete jungles of Los Angeles, east of Anaheim, Attawood, Fullerton, uh, all that area I, I just don't like to visit. Uh, pretty good swarm of movement there, about 11 earthquakes happening. The largest one so far, a 2.7. But the thing you gotta watch is the variable depths of these earthquakes there that could indicate potentially something larger brewing in the region. Uh, we're looking at one kilometer or so, all the way down to 7.2 kilometers. So keep a close eye on this region um, over the next couple days. A little bit of earthquake activity off the coast too. Some deeper movement, 10 and 13 kilometers off the coast of Santa Monica in the Pacific, 3.0 and a 2.1. Some further movement up off the coast too, uh, near Ventura, 2.2. Very shallow, one kilometer. Uh, as far as the San Andreas Fault System goes, it looks pretty quiet along the Sleeping Giant for now. Uh, a little bit of scattered earthquake activity throughout the uh, Southern California region along the San Jacinto Fault area. Ridgecrest looking typical. No major swarms to report. 
Uh, Intermountain West, pretty quiet. We already checked Yellowstone, just a couple small microquakes out there. Uh, the rest of the country looking pretty quiet. There is a little earthquake activity south of this region that we have seen some earthquake activity in the past take place. Uh, South Carolina getting in on a 2.6 near Summit. Looks like uh, 1.5 kilometers below surface for that little earthquake. Uh, North Atlantic, Mid-Atlantic Ridge area seen some movement as well. There was, a, I believe, 5.0 being the largest in this little sequence of earthquakes. Followed up by a couple fours. Puerto Rico, I've noticed them. They've been getting in on the action uh, a little bit on the higher scale. Looks like we may be coming back into a swarm. At a 4.2, the largest so far in that swarm, uh, happening to the east of this region where we've seen, uh, well, quite a bit of earthquake activity over the past year or so uh, in that region. 4.2, followed up by many twos and threes in that vicinity. South America, zooming in out here. Let's see what we got down here. Not a whole lot, folks. No major deep movement to report in Chile. Just a couple small four-pointers right at the subduction zone, back before it along the Peru-Chile Trench. Uh, and the Western Pacific. I didn't want to make this a super long video, but it's kind of turning out to be that way. Uh, 5.3 off the coast of Japan. And of course we talked about, <clears throat> there's my voice. Did you hear that? That deep earthquake activity uh, in Fiji. Hold on one second, folks. Okay. So two deep earthquakes here. Um, 575 and then the, the super deep one. Good Lord. 626 for that 4.4. Some deep movement. So a lot of stuff going on along the Pacific Plate. Uh, I, I would still be on guard west coast following that uh, 6.1 up here in Alaska. It looks Things seem, seem to be heightening up at the moment, uh, especially along the west coast into parts of uh, Washington along the volcanoes. Let's check out the trimmer real quick. From there we can get a better perspective of what's going on. 14 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia in the parts of southern Oregon. Uh, on the coastal ranges. Actually, it looks like it's in the valley right there around uh, Eugene, Roseburg area. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot of trimmer being reported at the moment. Let's check out Mount St. Helens and from there we can see on the local seismographs here from the pnsn.org slash volcanoes network. Uh, you can access their data. See if we can pick up this uh, yellow triangle here on this station. Ah, no, 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 no. It doesn't want to let me. Let's check out this one here. And you can go back many, many days and check out activity. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's go back to previous here. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any localized stuff. A lot of this stuff looks odd. So 3.0 near North Bend. Okay, so from here, this this right here almost looks like that uh, 6.1 uh, and 6.0 right there. You can see it even on this map, folks, two distinct earthquakes. But since they happen right close to each other, and, and Washington is a lot closer uh, to uh, Alaska region than, say, Yellowstone, those seismographs we were looking at. So even here, you can see those two distinct marks. If that secondary earthquake wasn't here, we would have been flat, not flatlining, but we'd definitely be half of this size of the seismograph reading, that earthquake reading. Uh, but that six-pointer hit. Uh, which extended it and then it started to dry out if there was another six pointer we'd see the same identical thing and then eventually it would level out but there's two earthquakes folks there's no doubt in my mind um about that or there's something weird about this earthquake that struck but i'm gonna dig into that a little bit uh, a little bit more but it's just it's odd it's very very odd so locally folks uh mount st helens man it is hard to decipher on here the local earthquakes um, and some of this stuff here some of this stuff looks distant but it could these could be smaller quakes much smaller quakes and further down below uh, which would give me this kind of reading that looks like it's far away localized quakes once again are going to be sharp distinct earthquakes uh, similar to this but a little bit sharper I believe that's a localized surface earthquake or at least a one of the 6.5 depth uh, microquakes that struck there at Mount St. Helens. Um, but it looks like it's active. It looks like things are picking up there um, at Mount St. Helens. Going to have to keep an eye on that. I do sometimes run the uh, Mount St. Helens seismograph station there on the uh, live stream. So I will 
kick that up and uh, see if I can add that onto the station list tonight. All right, what else we got, folks? I think that's it. Um, solar weather. There is a little bit of solar weather happening. Nothing major. We're looking at a potential for, uh, well, increased, heightened increased a little bit uh, in activity over the next couple days, couple nights. Uh, but nothing significant to talk about, folks. Uh, no major potential for solar flares. In fact, uh, only a 25% chance of a sea flare. All other flares, uh, less, way less. So uh, entering into potentially a little quiet area once again of the sun. Looking at the sun, there's some sunspot crackling right there, but uh, maybe they do not harbor enough uh, dynamics to produce uh, any type of uh, significant flares. But we'll see what's coming around here. Look over there. Look like, look like things may be popping up a little bit. Uh, no coronal holes facing us, just this one heading away from us. Of course, this is the one that will be bringing us that uh, uh, heightened activity of some uh, geomagnetic uh, solar storming. Uh, but nothing big and then after that we've got a few days of quietness and we'll see what's coming around the bend of the sun all right folks we're gonna jump off here rehydrate as 100 and uh, what do i say 107 108 what do we got in the seismograph station here i just seen something hold on a little earthquake down there in chile i don't believe it's been registered yet i can see that on the seismograph station there pretty close to uh uh let's see it's coming up it's coming up right uh, right here localized earthquake right around the Chile area. Nothing big, uh, but uh, we'll keep an eye on things, folks. I will add up, uh, I don't know what happened to my Donner Summit station. It's gone off the air all day, or actually all night and all day. And that's my area to get, Mont uh, get Lake Tahoe activity. Uh, I'll have to see if I can reset that and add that back on there. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys another time. Hope you had a great weekend and Memorial Day. We'll chat you guys another time. Peace out.